Hi everyone and thank you for joining me for this project. This drawing I did for a dear friend and also an artist who was struggling with the reference photo. And as I myself was planning on making a video about challenging or bad reference photos to work on, this was a great way to challenge myself and see if I can make the drawing happen from her reference photo. And so she allowed me and sent me the reference photo to give it a try on my own. And the reference photo, of course, was from her own family, so no third parties were involved. And this video will show the drawing process of this reference photo, and I will speak a bit about the challenges that we artists, and especially commission artists, oftentimes have to face when we work on other people's reference photos for commissions, or just from reference photos in general, if you pick one from the internet, that you need as a reference. A short side note on this, if you use reference photos from the internet, please make sure that they are royalty free, so that you will not run into issues with copyrights and legal stuff, etc. There are plenty of royalty free websites out there. I myself use Pixabay a lot and use my reference photos from there. But there are of course other sources which are paid and free, so make sure if you use a photo that it's royalty free. So not just use Google image search and pick whatever photo you want. This might cause problems. I don't tell it will, but it might. So just be safe to not have to face anything in the future. But when you come to a point that you really, really need this one reference photo in particular that you have just found on the internet, please make sure to ask the photographer for permission to use it. And if you get permission to use it, which will be great, and I've oftentimes seen that they will do it also from my own experience, please make sure to give them some credit when you post the artwork. So just say that the reference photo comes from whoever it was. So that it's not all your credit because the photographer had some credit for the reference photo as well. And I think this is something, especially we as an artist community, should care about. And if you have done commissions or if you're doing commissions, you might agree with me that working from a really good quality reference photo is a blessing. So we all wish to have these high resolution, perfect lighting, nice colors and contrast and razor sharp reference photos to work from. Because the better the reference photo is, the better the outcome will be. But yeah, reality often looks differently. So many of the reference photos we receive are a bit blurry and are not as sharp as we want them to be and the colors are a bit off. Or the picture itself is overexposed, which many of these mobile phone cameras automatically do. And this is oftentimes where the struggle for us artists begins, when we are asked to make a good quality drawing or painting from these photos. So tip number one, ask the client for more photos or to make new photos. And if you're lucky and the client can make new photos from the subject or the person, then you can also in a way guide your client on how the subject should look like to make a good drawing or painting from it. So how the lighting should be, how the position of the person should be, how the gesture should be, or actually how the complete setup of the photo should be to make it easier for you as an artist to make a good quality artwork from it. And of course, if the client is close by, so probably in the same city that you're living in, you can also offer to make the photo together with him, so that you use your equipment to make the reference photos and that you are present while the photos are being made, so that you can give your input. And this also, in a way, connects you even close to the client. So bottom line, this will be a win-win scenario because you get the reference photo that you actually need to work from and the client can be assured that they receive a good quality artwork in the end that you produce for them. And of course, often time you will not have the chance to meet in person. But something that you can do is to send them a photo that in a way looks like the one that you need from them. So if you have a photo of yourself, for example, that is in the perfect lighting and setup and gesture, what However, just send them this photo to have a guidance. Because when regular people are making photos, they do not consider all the stuff that photographers or artists have to consider to produce good quality photos. And so having something that they can relate on and see what you actually are looking for and need, this gives them some guidance and help on how they can create this photo in a way for themselves. So just perhaps something to think about. But of course, there are occasions where it's not possible to make new photos. If it was a childhood photo 
And you cannot recreate this photo, of course. So if it is a person that is no longer alive, which is always a very sad thing to paint or draw, and you put much more emotion into it than you would normally do in a regular painting or drawing, I think. So if these occasions come that there is no possibility to get newer or better photos, then you will just have to live with it. And you must decide on your own if you are able to render a good drawing or painting from this reference photos. And after a while you get this feeling in your stomach that tells you, okay, you can do this, or mm, I'm not really sure if this will end up as nice as I want it to be. Most of the times I can trust this feeling. So whenever I see a photo, disregarding if it's a good one or a bad one, my stomach more or less can tell me, okay, you can do it. It will look nice in the end. Or occasionally my stomach tells me, this might be tricky. You might run into issues. But even if your stomach tells you that you might run into issues, you do not have to deny the commission right away. So the second tip actually was trust your gut feeling. And the third tip will be talk to your client. I always talk to my client, which is always a good thing to do, isn't it? And if I see problems occurring on the horizon, I let them know and I tell them, okay, I can try, but the photo is blurry or the lighting is off or the color is strange and I tell them what my possibilities are, but I also make them aware that I cannot expect a Mona Lisa from a blurry in front of a mirror selfie photo. I let them know beforehand, before I start, what I can do with it. I tell them which might be problematic on the way, and I also make them aware that the end result might not be as beautiful and shiny as they might expect you to draw or paint it. So in the end, I leave the decision up to the client if they want to give it a go, having the fact in mind that they have to pay me anyways for the time that I've used, or if they decide to make another photo or newer photos, or just live with the idea that the end result might not be as perfect as they would have loved it to be. Because bottom line, we are just the artists and we can draw and paint what we see, but if the information that we can see in the image is not as sharp and detailed as we need it to be. Yeah, we cannot make up so much. Of course, we know anatomy and we can alter certain areas and faces and we can alter lightings and increase shadings and such. But bottom line, we do not know the person that is on the photo. And we only have the picture information which is on the photo, which we have to work from. So make sure that you know and let the client know what to expect in the end. And besides all of this, there is also this little nasty thing that they are photos which look really, really beautiful as a photo, but that you know of will not work as a painting or drawing. Another thing that we as an artist have to keep in mind, if you have a bad reference photo and you do not have the picture information there, so if you cannot really see the eye or if you cannot make up a haircut because everything is in the dark, just draw or paint it the way it is. So draw it and paint it as the way as you see it. And although this might be a strange thing to do, not to draw a specific part of the body, although you know how it in a way looks and that it has to be there, but if you can't see it, then just don't draw it or don't paint it. Just copy the reference photo there. Occasionally you have reference photos where you just can see one eye and the other eye is almost completely in the shadow. Your brain automatically tells you, oh, she or he has two eyes. You have to draw or paint two eyes, although you can't see it. And this will run you in issues in the end, because the values do not match. So if you really cannot see the second eye, just paint what you see. And if you only see a smaller, lighter dot as a reflection from the pupils or such, just paint this little dot. And the viewer's eye will make up the eye on its own. This is something it really took a while for myself to get hang to it because I also want to draw everything that is in the face, although it's not visible. And after a while having done works from challenging photos, as this is one, I tend to go just for what I see. It's always a struggle because you really want to paint everything that has to be there, but after a while you get a hang to it and can just live with it. When I think of the drawing of the little girl here, I had to make some things up. Because her eyes in the reference photo were not visible, just two dark dots. And if I would have copied it exactly the same way, it will have looked spooky and strange because of the lighting situations. So I had to make up her eyes actually, and I hope I did a good job. And when I blocked in her face, I asked my friend if it looks okay. So 
this looks like the person that she herself knows. And as she agreed, I continued on. And this is something, of course, we as an artist know about anatomy and how things look. And if you know the face structure, you can make up some things, how the eyes, the nose, etc. might have looked in another lighting. But you will never know for sure. So if I have to make something up, I always get back to the client and ask if this looks all right. Because most of the times the client will know the people that is on the reference photo and they can better decide for themselves if this looks like the person that they know in the end. And this in a way was the case for this reference photo. As you can see in the thumbnail right on the left corner, I made your original reference photo there to have a reference for you besides my drawing. This was a very old photograph. I do not know how many years it was old, but it was really old. And not even old, it was also an analog photograph. So really a photo, not a digital one, a real photo. And it was scanned and was not scanned in high resolution. So it was a small photo from an old photo, which are two things that do not come that well together. And as a third challenge, it was not just one photo. So both persons came from two different photos and I photoshopped them together to make it in a way fit. And luckily it in a way worked, but the challenge that we have when we compile photos from different sources, normally the lighting is different. So you very rarely have photos where the light comes from the same direction or that the colors are the same. So you have to adjust this in a way a bit. And as you can see on the reference photo, the light source shining onto the adult picture came from the right and the light source from the child picture came somewhat from above. And this is something you have to keep in mind when you make the final drawing or painting, that you adjust this as much as you can. <laughs> it is always a challenge adjusting light because you do not know the person and the person is not sitting in front of you and you have to make things up. But yeah, if you just paint these compiled photographs from two or more persons and keep the light as it was in the original photograph, it looks strange in the end because there is no logical way that the light source comes from different positions from two people sitting next to each other. So this is an important thing to keep in mind. So what I did, I used my photo editing program, which is uh, Photoshop. And you can use any photo editing program that you have available. And it does not have to be a very professional one like Photoshop. Before I had Photoshop, I used GIMP which is an open source program and currently free to use. And once you get the hang for it, it is a really versatile program, which can do much stuff that professional programs can do as well. So I took all the photos that I had available, and it was only two this time, and put them together on a new blank yeah, layer surface, whatever you call it in, the, in these digital programs. And yeah, the final result is what you can see there. And once I was done, I was pretty sure that I can do the woman pretty well. So I had at least some contrast, although her forehead area and the right side is really, really overexposed. But in a way, I was pretty sure I can render her as she was looking on the photograph. I was a bit doubtful on myself if I can render the little girl as I wanted to be, because there is not really pretty much to see at all. It was a very tiny photograph and it was blurry and yeah, you can see there are no eyes. So this was a thing I was not sure if it will work out in the end. And when you have watched the progress and my drawing until the very end, you can decide on your own if I did a good job or not. I was not entirely happy with it. I was pretty happy with the woman as she turned out as I expected. But in terms of the girl, I was not as happy with her as I wanted to be. But I did not want to doctor any more around on her to increase any shadings or values or make up some stuff in her face that I cannot really see just to be avoiding damage. So I did not really want to ruin it in the end as I was not happy with her so much and I have put a lot more time into her drawing than I was using for the woman. Overall, let me know what you think about it. If you think I did a good job, what you probably might have done differently. Or even if you have the impression that I totally failed at it. So just let me know. It was in a way a challenge to myself. If I can render such a difficult photograph into a nice drawing. Yeah, just let me know.
while I was talking about all the stuff that I consider when I yeah, accept or deny commissions in a way, he was able to see my drawing technique in the background. And this technique I use for almost all my charcoal drawings. If you want to have a closer look to my charcoal drawing technique, I have several tutorial videos in my tutorial section on my channel. So head over to these to have a closer look. But basically I only use one charcoal pencil, which is the sketch and peel charcoal pencil and some brushes and blending stumps, cutting birds, yeah, all the stuff to blend around. Two different erasers, which is a mono C eraser for details and the other one is just a larger round eraser, which is a no-name one as far as I know. But the mono C eraser is a really cool one to use because you can create fine details with it. And I usually draw in layers. So I start at the very darkest areas and go from there. So I'm blocking all the very darkest areas first to have a value checker in a way for me so that they can see, okay, this is the darkest area. Nothing can go darker and all the other areas around it must be lighter in a way. When the first layer is done and the first initial shading is on the paper, I use a fixative and add the next layer. Because in my drawing technique I cannot go as dark as I want with the charcoal and if I have a second or a third layer it is really perfectly dark. And especially for the hairs, if you make the first highlights in the very first layer, these are almost paper white again. If you add the second layer over it and make another highlights, you will get the depth into the hairs as you go on the way. And this is a quite natural looking, I think, way to draw the hairs. Of course, there are many different ways in drawing hairs, but this is my version and I'm quite pleased how the end result looks like. Tip number four. Another good thing to do when you do commissions, I personally make a work in progress photo every now and then on the way when I'm drawing and send it over to the client just to present the progress of your work in a way and also to receive the first feedback. So if your client sees something that's is going into the wrong directions. If the proportions are a bit off or if the shading looks strange or whatever the client might see, they can tell you in advance. So it is way easier to change things on the go than having a list of changes when the artwork is done and actually ready to ship to the client. So I every now and then just send a photo and in today's times they reply very quickly as through social media or email. And this gives you in a way a kind of backup that you know you're on the right track or some feedback if you need to change something. And this gives you a bit more of self-confidence that the client is in the boat. So that the client agrees with the way you're drawing and that the result is pleasing. Or if it is not pleasing, they will tell you what you might need to change. And then you can come back and say, oh, okay, I can change it. Or, okay, this is something I cannot change because it was not on a reference photo and so on and so on. And of course you might run into clients that need a ton of changes. And then it's up to you to decide if you can do all these changes or if this is just too much to ask for. And here we directly come to tip number five. Basically, I always recommend having some kind of agreement beforehand, something written where you state what you're going to draw, to paint, the size, the materials you're going to use, the price, of course, and if you want a prepayment or at least a partial prepayment. Perhaps also how many corrections you agree to do. So if you agree to make five corrections or if you can correct things in a time span of about, I don't know, two hours within the price that was given to the client. And for every change you need to make on top of these two hours, you need to charge an additional fee of whatever currency. So this is just something to keep in mind when you do commissions. But, but so far for me, I can say I've only had really lovely clients to work for. And yeah, I hope the very same for you as well, of course. I think this sums up the stuff that I basically wanted to tell you about doing commissions and working on a difficult reference photo. Please give me some feedback what you liked about my drawing. If you think I did well, if you think I totally screwed up, and if you think I screwed up, please let me know why exactly. Not just say you did a bit job, please also let me know what you might have done better and what I could do better next time. Or perhaps you have some tips to share with everyone, please write in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you've not already. If you want to get notified, you can click the bell icon, of course, and I would be happy to see you on my next video. Have a great day! <laughs> bye bye!